Hi, you've clicked onto the tropical tidbit for Saturday, July 7th. As always, the thoughts here are just mine, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center, your local weather office, and your local officials for the latest and best information. Well, we continue to track the two storms in the Atlantic, a Tropical Storm Barrel east of the Caribbean and Tropical Depression 3, which formed yesterday southeast of North Carolina. Uh, we'll start with Barrel here, which has weakened considerably since yesterday. Uh, this morning we see a, a naked circulation uh, northwest of what little convection remains on the southeastern side, and this is symptomatic of increased vertical shear, which we discussed yesterday would be increasing uh, over the next few days, and that seems to be what is occurring uh, with Barrel Center now exposed and uh, thus weaker and no longer a hurricane. Estimated winds are now 65 miles per hour, although this may be generous, and this will likely continue weakening on its way west-northwestward. In addition to increasing shear over the next few days, Barrel is beginning to become orphaned from the moisture source south of the ITCZ that has been sustaining the storm over the last few days, and this is now going to move deeper into this uh, very dry air mass in the central Atlantic, and uh, these two uh, detrimental factors will likely cause Beryl to be only a shadow of her former self by the time the storm reaches the islands. Uh, somewhere uh, between St. Lucia and Guadeloupe, uh, currently expected to be closer to Martinique or Dominica on its way into the Caribbean, and it wouldn't be surprising to see this uh, dissipate and become an open wave uh, either near or just beyond the islands in the eastern Caribbean, which is typically a hostile place for tropical storms at this time of year. Uh, however, even if the system is weak, it's important to note that given how fast the system will be moving, uh, any enhancement of the trade winds on its north side could result in uh, gusty winds above tropical storm force, and so tropical storm watches and warnings are up for portions of the islands. We have tropical storm watches from St. Lucia northward into some of the leewards, and we also have a tropical storm warning for Dominica. And that's uh, where the center is roughly expected to track, although given its small size, any deviation could change exactly which island gets the gustiest winds, but in general this is not expected to be a very strong event, but gusty winds above gale force could occur and enhanced rainfall uh, will occur as well, likely between Sunday evening and early Monday morning. And then uh, this is forecast to move toward Hispaniola after that, although it could really dissipate at any point uh, during this time here. An open wave uh, will likely bring rain to Hispaniola and Puerto Rico for a brief time, and then perhaps on up into the Bahamas after that. And some models do suggest that the remnants of barrel could try to redevelop over here in the southwestern Atlantic later next week, uh, but even if this does occur, the pattern is very likely to keep such a thing uh, well east of the United States, and uh, so is not really a concern in the long range for now, but we will keep an eye on it for the potential redevelopment later if conditions allow. All right, so that's Barrel. We also have Tropical Depression 3, which formed yesterday southeast of North Carolina, and if we take a close-in view of this here, uh, we see that convection is primarily located on the western side. Convection has been rather intermittent since yesterday, given that the environment has not been uh, pristine. Uh, we have only seen uh, uh, bouts of convection on and off. It disappeared last night and now we have convection returning this morning, uh, but the center of circulation is uh, located on the eastern edge, so that the eastern half is still a bit dry here and the system is not very strong yet. However, gradual organization is likely to continue and this is expected to eventually become a tropical storm over the next couple of days. Uh, we can see that the system is not moving very much, it's sort of just spinning here, and this may be just about as close as it gets to the southeastern U.S. coast. We can see that this cold front at the end of the loop here has now made it offshore of North Carolina. If you look carefully here after the sunrise, you'll see that uh, flow out of the northeast, low-level clouds, are showing this low-level wind behind the cold front um, across the outer banks. And so this front is already offshore, and the system cannot move through the front. That's not how it works. So it is uh, being kept offshore by this boundary, if you will, for the moment. And uh, that is likely to remain the case over the next few days. Yesterday, uh, the forecast track for this was a, a little bit uncertain uh, due to model guidance being a little bit chaotic and uh, full of low confidence solutions, uh, but we seem to have uh, gained a little bit of confidence today uh, on the eventual evolution of this system. If we look at the GFS 500 millibar forecast for Sunday morning, this is where TD3 will be. And we talked yesterday about how some of these runs were showing this, this ridge build over the Midwest in the Ohio Valley and try to trap this uh, south of North Carolina. And then eventually, when this gets dragged northeastward, it might get very close to the Outer Banks in the process of doing that. 
However, some changes have occurred since that time and models are now in a little bit better agreement on how to handle this short wave coming out of New England toward the southeast. This was a poorly handled feature yesterday and in preceding days, but since last night things seem to have become a little bit more consistent on the models, namely that this will dig in and become a little bit of a mid-level low here northeast of TD3. So if we go out to Monday morning on the GFS you can see that here's TD3 and here's this mid-level low. And what this low is doing is it's it's sort of tugging TD3 a little bit more toward the east than prior forecasts indicated. And so this is keeping it much farther offshore of the southeast US coast than some of the runs yesterday indicated. And we can see this on the European as well. Here's TD3 on Monday evening and here's the mid-level low to its northeast. And so again, a little bit of a tug on TD3 to keep it more toward the east. And so what happens is by Tuesday evening, this new big trough starts entering New England and starts to eventually whisk this off toward the northeast and uh, harmlessly out over the northwestern Atlantic as far as the United States is concerned, although it may get very close to the Canadian Maritimes and we'll have to watch for that uh, by days four and five. So in general, models now universally agree that this will stay offshore and it's unlikely to get much closer than it currently is to North Carolina. And as a result, uh, some of these rain bands, although they may graze the coast from time to time, not much heavy weather is currently expected and no watches or warnings are currently up for the US coast. And in fact, most weather currently impacting North Carolina is associated with the cold front and not the actual storm. This is likely to remain the case in general and the NHC forecast just follows the guidance now and brings this uh, toward the east very slowly and then more quickly to the northeast while gradually intensifying, perhaps eventually impacting southeastern Canada before it's all said and done, although it would likely be weakening by this point. We'll keep an eye on it as uh, the system develops. For now, the intensity forecast does bring it up to a hurricane prior to that point while it remains over warm water. It will likely be struggling a little bit over the next few days due to interaction with this cold front. Uh, what, we, what we have here is that behind this boundary, some of this air is cooler and drier, and this will likely start wrapping into the circulation over the next couple of days, especially after tomorrow, and this drier air could hinder development a bit. Uh, in addition, a cold front, which is a temperature gradient, is also by definition associated with vertical wind shear. And uh, for that reason, as the system gets a little bit closer to the cold front, some wind shear may begin detrimentally impacting the circulation as well. And so a combination of that shear and dry air could prevent uh, TD3 from intensifying very quickly, but gradual organization and strengthening is expected over the next few days. And so the official forecast does eventually bring this up to hurricane intensity, which is certainly possible after conditions uh, start to become a little bit more favorable in about three days. Uh, so we'll continue to watch this, expected to stay offshore of the U.S., but could impact southeastern Canada as it is weakening and decaying on its way out across the North Atlantic. So we'll keep an eye on that, as well as Tropical Storm Barrel, which is also expected to impact some of the islands in the Caribbean while weakening and uh, could bring enhanced showers to most of the lesser and portions of the Greater Antilles over the next few days. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.